Welcome to AGTV, brought to you by AppleGazette.com. Now, what we're going to do on AGTV is each week we're going to cover different aspects of Apple and Mac related culture, from the latest products that work with your iPod, iPhone, and your Mac, uh, to Apple news, maybe new products that might be coming out. Uh, might cover a rumor or two every now and again, top 10 lists, Apple history, anything that we can think of that works within the confines of Apple Incorporated and its surrounding communities and products. Now, the first thing we're going to take a look at is this, the Axiotron. Mod book. We're going to kick things off this week by taking a look at this handy little device. Now, the Axiotron Mod book has been a very buzzed machine, I guess you could say. It's something that has received uh, some favorable reviews, and there was a lot of talk about it when it was first released. Now, it was delayed a few times, uh, but when it did finally come out, uh, it was favorably received by a lot of people. And I got a chance to take a look at this thing in January at the Axiotron booth at Macworld. But recently, I got this review unit from Axiotron to really get a chance to play with it for a while. And recently, we went on a vacation, took it with us, and we spent some time uh, with the machine, tried to get used to it and see uh, how it worked uh, compared to a traditional MacBook. Now, the first thing you're going to notice about this thing uh, when you pick it up is that it is very, very heavy. It is much heavier than a traditional MacBook. Now, the actual weight is not that much different, but I was surprised at how much heavier this feels than a, a regular MacBook with that slight weight difference. Now, the second thing you're going to notice is there are no keys anywhere here uh, because there is no keyboard uh, attached to this at all. You don't get a keyboard in the box when it shows up. Uh, your physical keyboard free. Now, you do have this little guy right here, which uh, is an on-screen keyboard that does a decent job, but it, it's not something that you can use in any kind of practical way for everyday use. You know, surfing the web with this is, is really kind of annoying. Now, Apple, of course, has built-in tablet functionality into OS X with, with Inkwell, and that works pretty well. It, it does some nice uh, nice hand gestures, and, and it you know reads your, your, your different handwriting very well. Uh, uh, I have pretty bad handwriting, so it didn't do so well uh, on mine, but it worked a, a lot better with my wife, who, who does have much better handwriting than I do. But overall, neither of these uh, are practical ways to uh, input text onto this machine. Now, you can hook up a USB or Bluetooth keyboard, but if you do that, you're going to notice that this thing has no way of sitting up. And there are docking... Uh, clamps on it uh, that are supposed to work with some products that Axiotron is going to release later in 2008. But right now, there is no real easy way to make this thing uh, viewable if you're, if you're going to type on an external keyboard, unless you use the, the mini DVI out and hook it up to an external monitor. So if that's a solution that you're looking to, to try, then that's going to work for you. But other than that, uh, it, there's really not a lot you can do on the, the keyboard side of things that, that's going to be practical and, and work with you. The other thing that, uh, that, that is really the main reason you're going to be interested in purchasing this at all is the tablet functionality and how well that may or may not work. And I have to say that it works pretty well. Uh, you know, it, it does a good job in using something like Adobe Illustrator or something like that to, uh, to draw in. And I use a Wacom tablet almost daily to draw on, on the computer. So uh, it, it is definitely nice to be able to draw directly onto the screen. But when you look at the fact that Wacom actually offers a Cintiq tablet which will allow you to draw directly onto a screen for $9.99. And this thing runs uh, over 2000 almost $2,200, I think, what is it, $2,290. So $2,290 for this device. Uh, and what you're getting is a uh, basically a MacBook with no keyboard that's heavier than a MacBook. And you could buy a MacBook for uh, a little over uh, $1,100, a little over $1,000. Uh, you know, certainly you could get a MacBook and a Cintiq tablet, the, the cheapest Cintiq tablet, for less than you can buy this thing for. So if portability is a really big issue for you and you really want to be able to take this thing around, you know, you may find that, that it's, it's worth your time and worth your money to purchase it for that. But other than that, I really have a hard time recommending this particular uh, notebook or this mod book because, you know, the, the lack of keyboard is a, is a big problem for any kind of non-artistic use. And if you're just going to use this as sort of a tablet you can carry around and draw on, unless you're planning on doing that constantly, you can get more for your money by buying an actual MacBook with a full keyboard and a Cintiq tablet. So it's definitely something that, that you're going to want to research 
before you decide to make your purchase. Now, if you're a big fan of, of the mod book or you, uh, you know, think that it's something that, 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 that I'm missing here that might be great about it, it does have a GPS but uh, I can say that I've tried diligently to get my GPS to work in more than a dozen cities and never once got it to actually function properly. So I, I can't really comment on the GPS capabilities. But if there's something about this that I'm missing, feel free to send me an email at michael at applegazette.com and let me know if you like your mod book, if you purchased a mod book, and why you like it. Because I'd definitely like to know what the selling point is to uh, other people. You know, for me, as someone who is a, you know, a, at least a... Uh, someone who uses a Wacom tablet regularly, I have a hard time figuring out why I would purchase this over a MacBook and, and a, a, a separate tablet. Now, let's move on from the Axiotron ModBook, which, uh, you know, is not the best uh, 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 thing that I've ever uh, looked at, that's for sure. Uh, I, it's not a bad device. It's just not something that I can really figure out why I would want to purchase. Now, speaking of things you may not be able to figure out why you want to do, have you ever wanted your computer screen to look like the lower third uh, of an American cable news network? Well, my friend, if you've been wanting to do that, you can do it now with a little uh, application called Snacker. That's S-N-A-C-K-R. You can find it at snacker.net. Now, this was built with uh, Adobe's Air uh, development platform, so it does work on Windows, Macs, and Linux. You can go in and download it there for free and install it. And what it does is it is a unique way to read RSS feeds. And what it will do for you is allow you to uh, have your RSS feed stream across the bottom of your screen, very similar to a news ticker that you'll find on CNN or MSNBC or Fox News or any of those channels. Now you can get that and customize it to exactly how you want it with your, the feeds of your choice. It will run down at the bottom, up the top, on the left or the right. Now, if you want to try it yourself, the application is freeware and is available at snacker.net. Now, each week we are going to also answer an email question, but before we get to that email question, I want to thank our sponsor for this show, and that is Blogflux. Now, Blogflux is a website that has got a, a bunch of different tools that you can use for, for your blog. It's labeled Tips, Tools, and Resources for Every Blogger. You can find uh, uh, quiz generators where you can create quizzes that people can can take on your website without having to leave it to actually take the quiz. You can find poll generators, uh, traffic stats, uh, uh, all kinds of, uh, of cool tools that you can use. There's articles there, some of which I've actually written that you might find useful. And you can also find a, a, a growing community uh, of beginning bloggers and experienced bloggers to really get in there and, and learn how this whole blogging thing works if that's something that you're interested in doing. You can check that out at blogflux.com. This week's email comes from John G, who has a question about iPhone data plans. Now in the past, on the Daily Audio Show, I have talked about the fact that you could get AT&T to cancel your data plan after you set it up in iTunes if you gave them a call. Now his question is, I've had an ongoing argument with a friend that he can in fact remove the data plan from his iPhone service and reduce his monthly bill by doing so, but I can't seem to find anything about it on Apple or at and site. Can you direct me to where you wrote or talked about this? Is it possible they used to offer this uh, without the data, but now they don't? Now, after calling AT&T, I can confirm that the last thing that John said is in fact correct. At one point in time, at the beginning, AT&T would allow you to cancel your data plan, but now they no longer offer that as an option. If you're going to have an iPhone, you're going to have a data plan as well. Now, the representative that I talked to wanted to make sure that it was clear that they weren't just playing favorites with the, uh, with the iPhone or being selective and saying that it was only with the iPhone. Blackberries are the same thing. If you don't have a Blackberry data plan, you can't have a Blackberry on AT&T's network. So that's something that is a policy there and it sucks, but that's the way it is. That's it for this week's show. You can keep up with all the latest Apple happenings at applegazette.com. And if you'd like, you can follow me on Twitter at twitter.com forward slash AG underscore Michael. Definitely want to get your feedback about the show and ways that we can improve it and always make it better. We're certainly looking for, for any kind of feedback you can provide. Feel free to send me an email at michael at applegazette.com as well. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week.